He knows a lot about the science stuff, Professor Dave explains. So let's check out a few questions related to chemical bonding. The first question asks, which compound contains both ionic and covalent bonds? We've got four options there. The second one asks, which of the following compounds is covalent? And we've got another four options. The third asks, the total number of electrons that are involved in bonding nitrogen atoms together in N2 is these four options here. And lastly, the types of bonds present in copper sulfate pentahydrate are... And we've got four options there. So definitely check out some of my tutorials on the chemical bond, which talks about covalent bonds, ionic bonds, and other relevant topics. And when you're ready, give this a try. So this first question asks, which compound contains both ionic and covalent bonds? And so just going from the left, we can see methane, we see hydrogen, we see KCN, and we see KCL. So those first two, A and B, are covalent. Those are all covalent bonds. Whereas for D, KCL, that's a K plus ion and a Cl minus ion, that's purely ionic. However, KCN, that will be our answer because CN minus is a polyatomic ion. It has an overall negative charge, but C and N, that carbon atom and that nitrogen atom, are covalently bound with a triple bond. So that's K plus and CN minus, and therefore we have an ionic bond and some covalent bonds in between the C and the N. So that is our answer there. For number two, which of the following compounds is covalent? And so just looking at these here, we can see a lot of options that are between a metal and a nonmetal. And we know that metals and nonmetals will tend to make ionic compounds with each other. So the only one that doesn't fall into that category is A, hydrogen. H2, we know that two hydrogen atoms will form a single covalent bond between one another to form a molecule of hydrogen that is a diatomic molecule, and that is a covalent bond. So uh, calcium oxide and potassium chloride and sodium sulfide, those are all ionic compounds, so A will be our answer. For this third one, the total number of electrons that are involved in bonding nitrogen atoms together in N2 is, and for this we need to know the Lewis dot structure for this molecule, we know that nitrogen atoms each have five valence electrons, and therefore N2 involves a triple bond. So each nitrogen has three electrons participating in those three covalent bonds plus a lone pair. So we have three bonding pairs. Each covalent bond has two electrons, so that is a total of six electrons that are involved in bonding those two nitrogen atoms together. And lastly, we want to know the types of bonds that are present in copper sulfate pentahydrate. Now, let's take a look at this. Okay, copper sulfate, we know that that is an ionic compound, right? We have a copper 2 plus ion, and we have a sulfate 2 minus ion. So definitely ionic bonds are involved, or as they are expressed here, electrovalent. And so that's a little bit of a strange term, but you may see that term. So electrovalent, we're really just talking about ionic bonds. So we do, we do want to see electrovalent in there. But then we also have water molecules. This is a pentahydrate, and we know that water molecules have covalent bonds, right? An oxygen atom is covalently bound to two hydrogen atoms. So we do need to see covalent bonds in there, but let's also be aware that the structure of this hydrate is a little bit interesting in that those water molecules, they're not bound to the copper sulfate in a typical way. We wouldn't call those ionic bonds, and we also wouldn't call those covalent bonds. They're a little bit of a stranger kind of bond, which is called a coordinate covalent bond. So actually, the answer is going to be C. All three of those types of bonds are present in this compound. So the answer will be C. Thanks for watching, guys. Subscribe to my channel for more tutorials. Support me on Patreon so I can keep making content. And as always, feel free to email me, ProfessorDaveExplains at gmail.com. Thank you.